For thousands of years, humans have looked up into the night sky and wondered what lies beyond our planet. In 1926, Robert Goddard launched the first liquid propellant rocket, and since then, the global scientific community has accomplished amazing things in space exploration. Because of this, today, even hobbyists can pursue their interests in rocketry. I think my interests are like that we try to make a rocket from scratch. Meet Tanish, a seventh grader with a budding interest in rocketry. And like try to 3D print some stuff, like design it in CAD. Like use Open Rocket to simulate it and then actually launch it. Tanish has launched a few smaller rockets he's assembled from kits, but he wants to build a rocket from scratch to prepare himself for the American Rocketry Challenge a competition he hopes to participate in next year. We spent time over the last few months to help Tanish learn what it would take to design a good rocket and to help him build and launch it. Here's how the adventure began. During his winter break, Tanish researched the challenge rules and then came up with three design ideas for the rocket using a program called Open Rocket. It's a free app that anyone can use to design and simulate a model rocket. There's the nose cone, the one of the tubes, the connector, the other tube, fins. This is the engine. This is centering where you can put it in and lock it in. These are the guarding rails and this parachute. And this is a bulkhead, which I did not know what it was, but turns out you're supposed to like take it out, put the egg in, put all the wadding in, put it in. And like that's how you keep the egg in a rocket. A rocket's stability comes from the relationship between the rocket's center of mass, the point where you can balance it on one finger, and the center of pressure, the point where all the aerodynamic forces are balanced. In general, you want the center of mass in front of the center of pressure, and ideally, the distance between the two should be between one and two times the diameter of the rocket. During our first session, Tanish told us that this year's mission is to build a model rocket that carries one large chicken egg to an altitude of 800 feet stays airborne for between 43 and 46 seconds, and returns the rocket to the ground safely with an unbroken egg. After our first meeting, Tanish started modeling his ideas in SOLIDWORKS. We met several times to guide him as he refined the overall shape of the rocket. Then, we brainstormed ideas on how to hold the egg and the motor in place. What we came up with was a cradle for the egg that has three tabs on the back of it, they fit inside the nose cone, and they lock in place with a twist. We designed a sleeve for the motor and used the same twisting concept to hold it in place. Fabrication day is always a fun time. It's when your digital world meets the real world. Taking final measurements of purchased parts, like the tubes, and adjusting the 3D model before printing it is a really important step in making things that work the way you want. Can you tell me you're the boss? Because it's like sliding out, and if it's just a little longer, it'll slide out. I love it. Let's do yeah. it. So if we glue it in, it'll fit in pretty well. We had to experiment with the fit between the body tubes and the prints so that there was just enough room for glue. All of the parts were designed to print without needing support material, which saved print time and cleanup time. Teaching Tanish how to use the 3D printer was really rewarding, but nothing beats seeing the joy on his face when he saw his creation take shape right in front of him. No rocket is complete without a proper paint job. So, Tanish applied a few layers of black acrylic paint. To prepare it for its maiden voyage, we vinyl cut a stencil and Tanish used it to paint the rocket with its official name, the Egg Cubator. <laughs> it's probably time to secure the payload. Good luck. 
We will see you tomorrow. We believe in you. <laughs> All right, we'll see you tomorrow. It's an overcast day in New England. A bit cold, but a perfect day for launching rockets. We arrived at the field excited to launch, but first, the rocket needed to be reviewed by the officials. One of them was impressed with the overall appearance of the design, but started to raise some concerns. First was the position of the egg within the nose cone. Then, that the fins may be too small and the rocket wouldn't fly straight. Finally, and most concerning, was that the type of motor Tanish chose was missing a delay, which could be catastrophic in flight. Let's take a look at the anatomy of a black powder motor. When the motor is first ignited, the propellant is burned and forced out of the nozzle at the bottom. As it completes its burn, it ignites the delay charge, which is designed to burn more slowly. After a specific number of seconds, the ejection charge is ignited, which creates a small forward explosion that propels the parachute out of the body tube. This delay is critical in parachuted designs. When the motor ignites, it'll accelerate the rocket from a standstill to its maximum velocity, which it'll reach when it runs out of fuel. This of course would be the worst time to deploy a parachute, because it's moving at its top speed. But with the zero second delay motor that Tanish brought, that's exactly when his rocket would deploy its parachute. Ideally, you'd let the rocket coast until the forces of gravity and of drag slow it to zero, which happens at the apogee of the flight. This would be a perfect time to deploy a parachute and why a delay is so important. Okay, at this point, we were nervous that all this hard work was going to result in a no-go. Launch day canceled. Then, a glimmer of hope. The official had Tanish perform a spin test to address the first two concerns by simulating the stability of the flight. The results looked great, but we were still worried that we wouldn't be able to solve the motor issue. Thankfully, the official generously offered Tanish a spare motor he had, which provided a five second delay. Tanish loaded the rocket onto the launch pole, connected the ignition clips, and step back, ready for the countdown. How excited are you right now? Very excited. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I established in five, four, three, two, one, one. Whoa! Come on, parachute, come on, parachute! Oh, oh that is steaming hot! Oh, it's warm! <laughs> Wait, yeah. I think the egg might have broken, not gonna lie. Yeah. Who, who, you know, who packed that parachute? Might have cooked. <laughs> yes. I think we cooked the egg. That impact <laughs> killed it. We all learned a bit about parachutes that day. Specifically, a plastic chute on a cold day has trouble opening, and that there's a nylon alternative that performs much better. Let's see if the egg broke. Let's see, that's, this, yeah. is, this is the How test. How do things not break? Oh. <laughs> Some may see a broken egg as a failure, but in engineering and in making, failure is often the best way to learn. And for Tanish? He will take all that he learned from that day and apply it to many more flights in the future. A good, a good flight? <laughs> yeah. No, definitely. definitely. Good definitely. first flight. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. yeah.